Hi, this is Matt Danielson. I'm going to be recording the TCP Wireshark Lab for CS457, uh, Fall 2018. So what I have here is the upload to the Gaia server web page. I'm going to need Wireshark, which is right here, ready to go. I'm also going to have the uh, lab directions next to me so I know uh, the next step that I need to be following. I can kind of use this as a script. So let's go ahead and get started. We start off with uh, Wireshark. I'm going to do a packet capture. I'm going to come back here to the web page and I'm going to do my upload of my file. Go ahead and stop. Now I'm going to filter on TCP traffic. And what I can see here, this is the start of my uh, transfer to the Gaia server. So if I take a look at, at my instructions here, so right now this is the first packet of my transfer. This is being sent from my computer's IP address, which is 192.168.0.14. That's being sent to Gaia, which is 128, 119, 245, and 12. And the protocol is TCP. This is being sent from the port on my machine, 51634, to port 80 on Gaia's machine. This first one is going to be a SYN message. And so as it's sent, Gaia is going to send back a SYN ACK message right here. And so the uh, this one's coming from that's uh, IP address back to mine. Again, this is going from their port 80 to my port 51634. And right now, I'm going to be taking a look at the first uh, message of the or the first packet in the HTTP message that was sent. So that is going to be in this packet right here. Now this is the first one because the sequence number here starts at 1. And it's also got a post in the HTTP message that can be seen right here. So when I'm looking at this packet, the uh, sequence number again is 1. And I can take a look at the first six packets. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now for these first six, the sequence number is going to increase by the size of the packet. And so I can see the size of the packet for the first one was 661 bytes. And each packet after that is going to be uh, 1460 bytes. And so if I look here, this is sequence number one. If I add 661, the next sequence number is 662. Add 1460, I get 2122, etc. I can also see the round trip time of each uh, packet sent. There's a couple ways to do that. The easiest is to come in here to the TCP stream graphs and look at the round trip time. So here I can see that the round trip time is fluctuating, but for each packet, I can see it's uh, being sent between roughly uh, 65 milliseconds and 100 milliseconds. I explained about the length of each of the packets. Now the minimum available buffer space at the received end, how I can view that is if I come and I look at one of these packets here, under the transmission control protocol TCP section, I'm looking here at window size value. So in this case it's 256, which means the minimum received buffer is 256 bytes. And if I look uh, over here, I can see that the max for this uh, server is 65,536. So if I exceed that, then I will overflow the buffer and packets may have to be retransmitted. So how can we tell if there are any retransmitted segments in the file? I'm going to be looking at the sequence numbers. 
if a file has to be retransmitted, or if a segment has to be retransmitted, the sequence number would go down. And so the um, it would have to resend a packet that it had already sent. One easy way to look at that is if I come to my TCP uh, graph here, and I look at time sequence, the Stevens graph, what I'm looking for is any is that th this is continuously increasing. So I can see here that these values are constantly going up, which means that the packets do not have to be retransmitted. If instead one of the packets came down, or if this line here went up to here and then came down, I would know that one of the sequence numbers had to be resent. Uh, how much data does the receiver acknowledge in the ACK? Where I can look at this is by looking at the difference between the ACK values. So here, this ACK 662 is acknowledging the sequence number, or is acknowledging the packet with sequence number 662 up here. And the ACK is going to, is going to be the difference between the two subsequent acts will be the size of the packet that was received. So in this case, 662 plus 1460 gives me 2122. So I can see from this act to this act that one packet was acknowledged. If I keep scrolling through here, try and find an example of one where there's more than one packet acknowledged. So, in this case, for example, right here, this ACK was sent with 24, that, this one was, the sequence number of this ACK was 24022, and the subsequent one was 26942. So that gives me 2960-ish, 2920, um, and it's basically two packets were acknowledged with one ACK. If I wanted to uh, calculate the throughput, what I could do is I would come down to the bottom where the final uh, sequence is sent, and the final ACK is going to be the number of bytes that was the uh, size of the file. So in this case, the size of my file would have been 152.983, and then you subtract the sequence number of the first one, which was 1. So the total size of the file is 152.982. Then I'm going to divide that by the time it took to send. So the final ACK was sent at 3.298 seconds. The first packet was sent right here at 2.976 seconds. And so the difference between those was roughly 0.3 seconds. And so I would divide the no total number of bytes by the number of seconds. I have an example of me doing that calculation here on my homework. So in this case, on the, when I ran it the first time, it was 0.448 seconds. So 152,000 uh, divided by 0.44 gave me roughly 340,000 bytes per second which is about 341 kilobytes per second. Now, if I wanted to uh, know about the slow start, so if I look at the Stevens graph again, here what I'll be looking for is a number of transmits that are not all right on top of each other. So here in this case, this is a pretty quick start to the packet sending. And then through here, I can see that these uh, transmits are getting a little bit farther spread apart. So in this case, this is where the packet sending goes a little bit slower. And here it was a little bit quicker. So I think that about wraps up this lab. Again, this is Matt Danielson.